when I imitated Joe Biden because he couldn't get off the stage. So I'd imitate him because he couldn't find the stairs. He'd look around, he finished the speech, which would last, the speech would last maybe three minutes, maybe a little less than that. And then he'd want to get off the stage, and he'd always remember, he'd always go like this. And he'd go like this. And Secret Service did a great job. They'd come up in the stage and they'd pull him out. I talk about the border, nobody cared. But now they care. And I want to be known as your border president. I'm going to be known as your border president. And Kamala will be known as your invasion president. Just let them all come in. Let them all come in. Now, we got to save our country. Our country's going down. Tonight, let me also deliver a message straight to Kamala Harris. Have you heard of her? Who, by the way, was just rated by far the most liberal senator in the U.S. Senate, more so even further left than Bernie Sanders and Pocahontas. Pocahontas. She's more so. Elizabeth Warren, she's more left than Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren. Let me also deliver a message straight to Kamala Harris, the radical left Democrat politicians, and the fake news media. Look how many are there. But the message is it's time to stop the lies, stop the hoaxes, stop the smears, stop the lawfare or the fake lawsuits against me, and stop claiming your opponents will turn America into a dictatorship. Give me a break. But look at what has happened to New York and the other states, all run by radical left Democrats, every single one of them. Our heavy industries have exported overseas and our middle class has been eviscerated, right here at home, been eviscerated. Housing costs are out of control. Inflation has cost a typical family $28,000. Think of it. In less than four years, $28,000. And we filthy encampments. We have horrible, disgusting, dangerous, filthy encampments of junkies and homeless people living in places that our children used to play Little League Baseball, which they don't get to play very much anymore, do they? Over the past three years in New York City, there has been a 29% increase in robbery, a 36% increase in felony assault, a 42% increase in grand larceny, a 75% increase in carjackings. Did you buy a nice car lately? Well, 200 police officers leave the NYPD, New York's finest. I always say I knew it well. New York's finest. They leave every single month, 200 people a month. Incredible people. They're incredible people. But I will stop the Kamala crime wave and we will do everything we can. We're going to get these violent criminals behind bars. We're going to get them out of our country. We're going to take them back to the country from which they came. And Stephanie, unlike a lot of my friends, doesn't want adulation. Honestly, what she wants more than that, she wants her husband back. That's what she wants. The criminal charge was savagely murdering Officer Diller, was previously arrested by the NYPD 21 times, right? 21 times, Bruce. And the accomplice driving the car had been arrested 14 times, but he was actually much worse. He was more vicious 14 times, but he was actually far more vicious. This is the kind of story we hear every single day under radical Democrat policies like cashless bail, cashless bail. You kill somebody and you're out on the streets in two hours. Cashless bail has been a disaster for our country. Kamala Harris wanted it no matter where she went. She boasted about being the leader of the movement of cashless bail, just like she led the effort to defund the police. You know, she was the leader of the effort to defund the police, and now she's running for president. But a little while ago, like everything else, no fracking, no this, no, she changed her mind. Now she says she likes the police. She can't say love, but she says like. 
She's made a lot of progress, but you know the first thing that would happen is she will go to defunding the police, if that's even possible. We will rapidly defeat inflation. We're going to bring your prices down. All they're doing is they've cut it, but you're up 55 or 60 percent. People that used to live a nice life four years ago, they can't afford an apple. A woman, they showed a picture of a woman the other day. I said, boy, that's sad. That should never happen. Her. She went to the counter, the cashier, she had three apples. And when she was standing with the cashier, she realized she didn't have enough money for one of the apples. And she took the apple, brought it back. And she bought two apples. That shouldn't be happening in our country. We will cut interest rates, cut insurance costs, and insurance is horrible. And massively, we will cut your taxes again. I gave you the largest tax cut in the history of our country. Kamala Harris, as you look at her plan, will give you, very simply, the largest tax hike in American history. She's going to lift your taxes. This is the only person I've ever seen, and Biden too, they announced that they're going to raise your taxes, and it's supposed to be good politically. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never seen that, Anthony, before, where they say they're going to raise your taxes. They're going to raise your taxes. To vote for me, I'm going to raise your taxes. Can you believe it? I, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that, because the news will say, Vote for me, I'm going to raise it. They're going to say, I, they're going to attribute it to me. I can't do that. I told our great first lady, I will not be sarcastic anymore. When you joke or when you're sarcastic, the fake news will take a story like that. I'll say, I never said I was going to raise your taxes. Yes. Vote for me, I'll raise your taxes. Kiddingly, kiddingly, kiddingly. These people are the worst. When I imitated Joe Biden because he couldn't get off the stage. So I'd imitate him because he couldn't find the stairs and look around. He finished the speech, which would last, the speech would last maybe three minutes, maybe a little less than that. And then he'd want to get off the stage and it always remember, it always go like this. But you remember, we're not running against him, we're running against somebody who's actually much worse. Ready? And he'd go like this. And then he'd walk in a different direction. It was the weirdest thing. And Secret Service did a great job. They'd come up in the stage and they'd pull him out. Like, nah. So you can't be sarcastic. Sarcasm with the media doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't. So I've given up about, I've given up about 90% of it. I got all my friends here. Anthony, 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 stand up. Anthony Lomangino, one of the greats of all time. He said, I have a big business problem. What? I have too much cash. I don't know what to do with it. I said, I've heard of, I've heard of worse problems than that, Anthony, right? He's doing good. He's a great man, great businessman and a great person. Kamala wants income tax hikes, small business tax hikes, capital gains tax hike. How about the capital gains? She wants a tax, unrealized, capital gain. That means she wants to give you a capital gain. Even if you have stock, she wants to give you a capital gain even if you didn't sell it. Under border czar Kamala Harris, you know, she was the border czar until she started looking at this situation, until the coup. I say until the coup because it was a coup. But she was a border czar. Now she said I was never the border czar. You know what? Give her that. But she was in charge of the border, and the border is the worst run border in the history of the world. There's never been a border like this. 21 million people, illegal aliens are coming in from all over the world, from prisons and jails, from mental institutions and insane asylums. Many tourists are coming in just to watch. Did you ever see this? But you know what? We're going to have the greatest win in history when we pull this one off. It's going to be legendary. I talk about the border, nobody cared. But now they care. Because now the border is 25 times worse than it was in 2016. Now the border is not even believable what's happening. And I want to be known as your border president. I'm going to be known as your border president. And Kamala will be known as your invasion president. Just let them all come in. Let them all come in. Now, we got to save our country. Our country's going down. 
If you look at what's happening with the Venezuelans taking over, I mean, they're taking over large pieces of real estate in Colorado, and you have a Democrat governor who's petrified of them. He's afraid. I'd never seen anything like it, and he doesn't want to talk about it. We are hiring interpreters, so when they go to school and take the place of our children in school, we have an interpreter. Each one will have a private interpreter. What the hell is wrong with our country? These people have to be taken out, and you start with the stone-cold killers, the murderers, the drug dealers. You start, you get them out, and you tell them if they ever come back, big trouble. But let me tell you what you really do. Some of them are so bad, you can't take the chance of sending them out because they'll come back. You lock them up, and it's going to be there for a long time. Here on Long Island, the open borders policies of Kamala Harris, and it were really her policies that the communist left, I call it the communist left, have been importing MS-13 gang members by the thousands. I don't know what it is about Long Island, but you know, I took thousands and thousands of gang members out. Do you remember the story? And just today, three agencies of the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden administration, the FBI, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, they just released a report confirming that Iran actors hacked into the Trump campaign's email accounts and in turn sought to give the hacked materials to the Biden-Harris campaign. They gave them all of the materials because Biden is working with Iran and Iran doesn't exactly like me because they were ready to make a deal, except we had an election that was rigged and stolen. We had to go two and a half years and then they finally said, all right, the Mueller, remember Mueller? He said, in, in millions of phone calls, Trump didn't make one to Russia. They went through every phone call I made, can you imagine? In millions of calls, not one call to me. And a lot of people apologize for that, but not enough people apologize. They wasted time and money. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars going after me, and they got nothing. They got nothing. But we cannot allow this insanity to continue anymore. That's why less than two months from now, we are going to tell Kamala that we've had enough. Kamala, you've been a terrible vice president. You will be an even worse president. We're not going to take it anymore, Kamala. Kamala, you're fired. Get out. You're fired. We're not going to take it anymore, Kamala. From the moment we take back the White House from Kamala Harris, I believe we are going to have the four greatest years in the history of our country. And I will settle the war in Ukraine. I got along very well with Putin and Zelensky. And I will end the chaos in the Middle East. A vote for Kamala Harris is a vote to obliterate Israel. That's what's going to happen, Israel. Israel will not exist in two years. And by the way, we are closer to World War III right now than at any time during anybody's life in this beautiful room. I will stand with Israel and we will return a thing called peace through strength. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. We're not going to have war in the Middle East. We're not going to have war with Russia and Ukraine. You know, when I was there, we didn't have any war other than ISIS. I finished them off. We knocked out al-Baghdadi, the founder of ISIS. Think of that. We knocked them off. It was supposed to take four to five years. I did it in four weeks. The Russian attack on Ukraine and the October 7th attack on Israel would never have happened if I was president. Would never have happened. Think of what the world would be and think of what our nation would be with no Russia-Ukraine war. No October 7th disaster in Israel and the Middle East. It was just, it's inflamed right now. It's inflamed like nobody's seen it for 50 years. No inflation and energy dominance. That's what it would have, energy dominance. We'd have no inflation. We wouldn't have either the Middle East or the Russia, Ukraine. What a different world it would be, wouldn't it be? Oh, uh, we can't let them cheat on elections anymore. We can't let it out. But this is how we will end the era of inflation, mayhem, misery under Kamala and Crooked Joe and unleash safety, prosperity, and peace for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. That's what we're going to do.
We will stop the invasion, end migrant crime, support our police, strengthen our military. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris and the crooked Democrats. So we must stop her country destroying liberal agenda once and for all. So get everyone you know and vote. We want a landslide that is very simply too big to rig. Too big to rig. Thank you very much. We love New York. Love New York.